Let's talk about what is probably the least sexy Final Cut Pro topic, media management. If you are spending time looking for footage, images, or other assets that are all over your hard drive, if you're creating folders from scratch for every project to organize your files, or you're not using roles or smart collections to your advantage, then you are wasting time. I'm here to help you to get your time back and these nine organization or workflow hacks from copying your footage off the SD card to backing up the final product are guaranteed to save you loads of time and speed up your workflow. So stick around. Let's start with how I organize my folder structure on my hard drive. I have a folder structure template set up and I've labeled it as triple Z. What I always do is duplicate this folder using the shortcut command D and I'll hit return and rename it to the next number in the sequence, in this case 186, and then the project name. Inside this folder, I have the following folders. Admin, this is where I store scripts, NDAs, brand guidelines, fonts, or any other documents that are specific to this project. Next is audio, and I have subfolders for dialogue if I record my audio separately, like on a Zoom recorder, music, and sound effects. Then I have an FCP folder with my Final Cut Pro library template file, and I'll show you how I set this up later in the video. I'll always rename it to the name of the project. Next is my final exports folder, which is pretty self-explanatory. And then I have my footage folder with my most common subfolders, A7 III, screen recordings, and stock footage, for example. Depending on the project, this might change. For projects with multiple cameras, I might change the folders to Cam A, Cam B, or for travel videos, I'll break them up into day one, day two, etc. And each of those folders would have subfolders for different cameras. Then I have a graphics folder where I store all the project files and renders for any graphics that I might create in a different app. And lastly, I have a folder for images that I might use in my edit. Now, there is a free app called Post Haste that allows you to organize your projects with customizable templates. Dylan Bates actually spoke about it on my channel in a previous video, which I'll link to down below if you'd like to go and check that out. Staying organized in Finder makes it easier to organize your footage in FCP, and it saves you time because you don't have to figure out where the files go for each project. There's a set system that you can follow. I'd recommend that you create your own customized folder structure that suits your needs. Now it's time to copy footage from your SD card to your computer or a hard drive. By the way, I use the SanDisk Extreme Pro SSD and I highly recommend it as a working drive. When you copy footage, you will have noticed that you have this generic kind of numbering sequence and it looks different depending on the type of camera you use, but C0005 means absolutely nothing to me. So I like to rename all of my clips. I usually add descriptive words related to the folder that the footage is in, like Cam A or Cam B, or Day 1, Day 2, GoPro, Audio, SR for screen recording, etc. Remember this because this ties in with one of my biggest time-saving hacks inside Final Cut Pro later on. If you have a look at my footage from my month-long trip around Europe, I have renamed each clip with the day, the place, and whether it was my camera or Donna's camera. Not only does this allow me to see where a clip comes from by just looking at the file name on the timeline, it also helps me to organize my FCP library faster. More on that in a bit. You can rename all of your footage by selecting all of the clips in the folder, right-clicking on them, selecting rename, then select format, type in a descriptive name with a space or an underscore at the end, and Finder will rename the clips in sequence. If you want to keep the original clip name, you can just select the add text option to add your description at the beginning of that clip name. Now this works well, but it does have a few limitations, and I created an Automator workflow that has a few extra options. If you don't already know, Automator is an app that comes with macOS, and it allows you to automate all sorts of tasks. I set up this workflow to accept a bunch of files via drag and drop, which it will then sort and rename. One reason why I prefer using this workflow as opposed to the rename option in Finder is because when shooting GoPro footage at different frame rates, the clip name often changes and then sorting by name puts those clips out of sequential order. But by using this workflow, I can sort the clips by creation date and then maintain the order that the clips were shot in. You can adjust these parameters as you see fit and when you hit run, it will rename all of those files for you. 
Also, if you are renaming multiple days of footage, you don't have to retype the file name again. You can just change the name from day one to day two, remove the files, add the new ones and hit run again. This alone has been a huge time saver for me over the years. You can download the workflow using the link down below and my advice would be to save it somewhere where you won't accidentally move it. Maybe somewhere like your movies folder. And then go to view, customize toolbar and drag and drop it onto the finder window. Now the rename a workflow is easily accessible from any finder window. Okay, so you've got all your footage renamed and you're ready to import it into Final Cut Pro. Usually I would just open my template and start importing footage, but there are a few settings that you need to be aware of first. So create a new library in Final Cut Pro and head over to Final Cut Pro, Preferences, and under the Import section, you can choose to copy your imported files to the library storage location or to leave files in place. I always have leave files in place selected because I organize all of my media in Finder and I don't want Final Cut Pro to duplicate those files into the library file, which then makes your library file hundreds of gigs. I also want these two keyword options selected. I turn off all of these analysis and transcoding options as well. These settings will be applied to any and all imports going forward. Let's set up an FCP library template and this will be the file that you keep in your folder structure template so that when you duplicate it, your Final Cut Pro library template is duplicated as well. I'll start by creating a new project using the shortcut command N. I'll call it template and 4K 23.976 frames per second is fine. I'll click on the index window over here and select roles and then edit roles. Here I will add a new role for each of my media types. This will vary for you and the kind of projects you work on but let's add a new video role called B-roll and I can change the color here too. I usually create a corresponding audio role which I'll call B-roll audio and I'll match the colors. You can do this for any and all roles that you might want to create. My typical role setup for my YouTube videos looks like this and here is another example of a role setup for an adventure film for a client. As you can see for bigger projects you might have very specific role setup but this role setup is my default for 90% of my projects. If you want to do a deep dive on roles, then make sure you check out this video where I explain the power of roles. But after this video, of course, don't worry, I'll remind you at the end. Using events is another way to organize your footage. You can rename events by hitting return and giving it a name. You can create a new event using the shortcut option N. You might want to use events to separate your footage, your audio, images, project files, etc. I don't usually use events in this way because if you click on the drop down arrow next to the Smart Collections folder, you can filter the browser window by video files, audio, projects, etc. More on Smart Collections in a bit because they are super powerful too. If I'm working on a YouTube video or a client project that isn't too crazy, I will just store everything in one event. For a larger project shot over multiple days, I'll usually create an event for each shoot day. If I'm working on client projects, I might create an event for each video in that project. For example, when I work on courses, I will have events for each stage of the production process like this. I'll have a work in progress event where all of the assets will go, but also where my initial timelines will start. Then a waiting for assets event where I move the project files to if I need something from the client in order to finish that video. Once I've exported for review, I'll move the project into the in review event. And finally, the projects will move into the approved event when they're all done. It makes it easy for me to see how many videos I still have to work on and at which stage of the production process they are, right inside of Final Cut Pro. One of the most powerful organization tools, which I don't see people talking about that often on YouTube, is Smart Collections. Smart Collections allow you to filter the media in your Final Cut Pro library using keywords or other parameters. Let me show you how it works and I'll give you a few of my common use cases for Smart Collections. Use the shortcut Option Command N to create a new Smart Collection. You can also create one by going to File, New, Library Smart Collection. And for this example, let's call it screen recordings. I'll then double click on the gear icon and here I can choose the parameters for the smart collection. I'll click on the plus icon and you'll see that you can filter by any one of these parameters. I'll select text and then change all text to names 
and I'll make sure it includes the text SR. Earlier, I mentioned that you can rename your clips with descriptive words like Cam A, B Roll, or SR for screen recordings. And by doing that, I can use Smart Collections to filter my clips in Final Cut Pro. I'll close that up, and now you can see I have the Screen Recording Smart Collection, which will show all of my screen recordings. I also like to use collections if I'm working with multicam footage. I'll label the first camera Cam A and the second camera Cam B. I have Smart Collections set up for both, and in that case, when I select Cam A, I can hit Command A and select all of the files, head over to my inspector, and type the camera name in the inspector window. I can do the same for Cam B, and doing this allows me to sync my multicam clips a lot easier and a lot faster. Here's another example for a large project with 1.7 terabytes of footage. This project was shot over multiple days with multiple cameras, and I wanted to assign roles to each of the different clips so that it's easier to see which clip came from which camera. So I created a smart collection for all GoPro clips, and then by selecting the GoPro smart collection, I can select one of the clips, hit Command A to select them all, and then right click to assign my GoPro audio and video roles to those clips. Sure, you could just have your library selected and click on the magnifying glass and search for GoPro to find all the GoPro clips and then assign all the roles. But if I ever need to go back and look for a specific GoPro clip in my browser window, I can simply go ahead and click on the smart collection and I don't have to search for the GoPro clips each time I want to do that. Hopefully these examples give you an idea on how powerful smart collections are and hopefully it also gives you some ideas on how you can incorporate smart collections into your workflow. Once you have set up your Final Cut Pro library to your liking with roles, events, and smart collections, go ahead and save the template into the FCP folder in your Finder folder template. Next time you're about to start a new project, you can simply duplicate the folder and you'll duplicate that template as well. Keywording is another great way to organize the media in your Final Cut Pro library. You can simply select a clip in the browser, hit Command K, and then type in a few words separated by a comma that describe that clip. You can also click on this down arrow and add a few keyword shortcuts or keywords that you use often. Then you can simply select the clip and hit Control 1, 2, or 3 all the way through 9 to add those commonly used keywords. This is great because then you can simply click on the down arrow next to the event and quickly navigate to those keywords, where only those clips will be selected and you can browse through those clips in your browser window. Another cool thing that you can do is tag your clips in Finder by right clicking on them and assigning a specific color. Maybe you want to mark all of your talking head footage red and all your B-roll green. Then when you drag that footage into your event, those colored tags become keywords. You can also rename them if you like. In Finder, you can also add additional tags which you can name, like stock footage for example, and when you drag those clips into your project, the stock footage tag becomes a keyword. This might be useful if you have a library of clips in Finder that you often drag into new projects, because by tagging them in Finder, they will always have those keywords when you import them into Final Cut Pro. I'll be honest, I don't use keywording all that often, especially if I'm cranking out a YouTube video or doing a quick client video, but on larger projects where staying organized is absolutely essential, then keywording can be really helpful. I'm not going to do a breakdown of my entire editing workflow in this video because that would be a very long video on top of what is already a very long video. But if you found the information in this video helpful and would like to see an edit breakdown video like that, please let me know in the comments. I will, however, give you a few tips to keep your library organized as you go through the editing process. You might need to create multiple versions of an edit as you get feedback from a client or as you go through your editing process making revisions to your own videos. I usually label all of my edits with version 1 at the end of the project name. This way, when I work on a cut down or make revisions to an edit, I can simply select the project and hit Command D to duplicate it, and the duplicate will automatically be renamed to version 2. If you have any compound clips or multicam clips in your edit, duplicating the project like this keeps them linked, if you will, meaning that if you open up a compound clip or a multicam clip and make changes in version 2, then it will also make those changes in version 1 of your edit. This is not necessarily a bad thing, and I use this to my advantage all the time. 
If I've duplicated a project with a compound clip of, let's say, a client logo, then the client says to me, please don't use that version of the logo, rather use the white one. I can simply open up the compound clip in one of the timelines, update the logo, and then that logo updates across all of the timelines where I have that compound clip. Alternatively, you can choose to snapshot a project using the shortcut Command Shift D, which will duplicate the project, but a self-contained backup version is created where the compound clips and multicam clips are not linked. So for example, if I go into a project that I've snapshotted and I change the color grade in the multicam clip, if I go back to the original project, that grade does not affect the multicam clip because there are now essentially two instances of that multicam clip in the library. When your edit's done, it's time to back up all of your media files and your project files. And there are so many different options to choose from. I ran a community poll recently to see what you guys do, and a lot of you use multiple hard drives. That's what I always used to do, but when I moved to Portugal, I didn't want to move with 20 hard drives. So I was looking for a cloud-based solution. Backblaze is a popular option, but I went with Dropbox's unlimited plan and I've had a few requests to talk about my Dropbox workflow and why it works for me. I was already using Dropbox to transfer footage with clients, so it felt like a natural progression to upgrade to the unlimited plan. This video is not sponsored by Dropbox, by the way. I'm just sharing my experience using Dropbox as my backup solution. What I love about it is that everything works through the Finder extension. So by simply clicking on the Dropbox icon in my Finder window, I have access to all of my backups. For example, let's say I wanted to back up a recent YouTube video that I did. The first thing I would do is open up that project in Final Cut Pro, select the library, head over to File, Delete Generated Files, and I will delete all of the render files and the optimized and proxy media. If you've ever seen your library file size just blow up to like hundreds of gigs or even over a terabyte, this is likely why, unless you store your footage inside the Final Cut Pro library file, which we spoke about earlier. Once those files have been deleted, I'll close the library, and now that library file is as small as it can be. To back up that project, I will copy the entire folder from my external hard drive into my Dropbox folder, which is located on the internal drive on my MacBook Pro. When the files are done uploading, you will see a green tick to show that the files are synced to the cloud. I'll then right click on the folder and select make online only to remove it from my hard drive. Online only files are shown with this gray cloud icon. If I ever need to find old project files, footage or anything else, I can use macOS's spotlight to search for my files to find exactly what I'm looking for. Then I can simply right click on a file or folder and select make available offline to download those files. It's not the cheapest solution because you have to pay for three team members on the advanced plan to get unlimited storage, but I currently have about 60 terabytes in the cloud that I can access whenever I like and from wherever I like, so to me, it's worth the money. And that pretty much sums up my file management process from copying footage off the SD card all the way to backing up the final project files. I hope you found it helpful and I would love to hear more about your workflow and what systems you have in place to speed up your workflow. So feel free to leave a comment down below because I'm sure that those comments will be helpful to other editors as well. And don't forget, you can download the free renaming workflow using the link down below. And lastly, check out my video on the power of roles next because if you're not using them yet, you're missing out. See ya.